The Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, verse 1 through chapter 4, verse 13. John presents the Messiah to Israel. In the ninefold structure of Luke's Gospel, we have come to section 3, John's mission to introduce the Messiah. Here is what we have learned thus far about John the Baptizer. The angel Gabriel announced his conception and his name. He was filled with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb. He had righteous elderly parents. He came from a priestly lineage, grew up in the wilderness, came to Israel in the spirit of Elijah, recognized as a prophet of the Most High. He came to prepare the way of the Lord announcing salvation by repentance and forgiveness of sins. The major themes of this section include the following. God's wrath comes upon wicked nations. God forgives those who repent, that is, who admit their wrongdoing and are willing to change. God wants to save both Jews and Gentiles. God wants us to share with the needy to deal truthfully with others, and to be content with what we have. Jesus is the Messiah, the awaited King, whom Jews were expecting to come rescue their nation. Jesus has brought the age of the Holy Spirit. Stop the video and read Luke 3, verses 1 and 2. According to these information, John appeared sometime between 29 and 30 CE. Stop the video and read Luke 3, verses 2 and 4. In the New Testament, there is a transition between three phases of baptism. First, there is Jewish baptism, whereby the defiled come to the water, God cleanses them, and they go away ritually clean. John adopted and adapted baptism, whereby individuals and families come burdened with sin. They confess their sins, John baptizes them, God forgives them, and they go away performing works suitable to repentance. And in Christian baptism, we come with our disbelief as well as our sins. As we pass through baptism, God grants to us the forgiveness of sins with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and thereafter we live by the character that derives from the presence of the Holy Spirit. Stop the video and read Luke chapter 3, verses 4 through 6. Compare this with Isaiah 40, verse 5. The Greek Septuagint and the New Testament read, Then the glory of the Lord shall appear, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God, because the Lord has spoken. Whereas the Hebrew version reads, Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The difference is due primarily to translation. Stop the video and read chapter 3, verses 7 and 8. Note that, Vipers were commonly believed to eat their way out of their mother's womb. Thus, to call folk a brood of vipers was a worse insult than to call them vipers. Some folk believed that God would save them because they were his chosen people. However, in Scripture, election or being chosen does not guarantee salvation. Though Israel was the chosen people, Many, if not most, Israelites disbelieved in Yahweh and were lost. Some have noted that the Greek myth of Deucalion and Pyra, whereby, following the great flood, the god Zeus told survivors to repeople the earth by casting behind them the bones of their mother, which they understood to be stones. Throwing the stones behind them, these became new humans. Did John borrow from that story? In any event, he was speaking Aramaic, a language in which kephas means stone or rock, 
and kafas means human being or person, making a clever play on words. Stop the video and read chapter 3, verses. In the Hebrew Scriptures, God chose Israel as a special nation to bring Gentile nations back to faith in Him. Thus, in ancient times, some Gentiles became Israelites through conversion to Israel's God, Yahweh. In Israelite society, those who rejected Yahweh were excluded from the nation. And in the New Testament scriptures, all who believe in Jesus, Israel's Messiah, become God's people, that is, the Israel of God. Stop the video and read Luke chapter 3, verses 9 through 11. To be thrown into the fire was a figure of speech, meaning destructive judgment. The translation, two sheds, refers to the outer tunic worn by many folk in the Roman Empire. Most poor folk would have only one tunic. So discuss amongst yourself, what does love do when it has means, that is, more than they need? Stop the video and read Luke chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. Apparently, most folk during those days considered tax gatherers to be either dishonest or traitors to the nation. Soldiers came to John. Israelite soldiers were mostly tax police, whereas Roman soldiers were considered to be foreign invaders. Discuss together. What points of God's law was John applying to prove someone's repentance? The law had said, you must not steal, you must not give false testimony, and you must love your neighbor as you do yourself. Stop the video and read Luke 3, verses 15 and 16. Three texts in the Hebrew Bible are very important to explain the New Testament. Isaiah reported the words of Yahweh, I will pour my spirit on your offspring and my blessing upon your children. Ezekiel reported Yahweh's words, I will no longer hide my face from them when I pour out my spirit upon Israel. And then Joel reported the words of Yahweh, I will pour out my spirit on all kinds of people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your elderly and your young men. Now, what is baptism in, by, or with the Holy Spirit? First, recognize that Jesus did not baptize in the Holy Spirit until after he rose back to life. At the Feast of Pentecost, Jesus baptized the Jews in the Holy Spirit, as reported in Acts chapter 2, along with converts to Judaism. In Acts chapter 10, we read, we read how he baptized the Gentiles in the Spirit. And then, in Acts chapter 19, he baptized it in the Spirit, disciples of John the Baptist, when they believed in Jesus. Since Acts chapter 2, all Jews received the Holy Spirit when they trust in Jesus. Since Acts chapter 10, all Gentiles receive the Holy Spirit when they believe in Jesus. And since Acts chapter 19, all disciples of John the Baptist receive the Holy Spirit when they believe in Jesus. Thus, Paul was able to write later, We have all been baptized in one spirit, Jews or Gentiles. Any special experience that you believe you have had with the Holy Spirit is not the baptism in the Holy Spirit. It is an experience. The command for Christians is to keep being filled with the Spirit every day, every hour, whenever you need it. Stop the video and read chapter 3, verses 16 through 18. To be baptized with fire means to fall under divine judgment. You will either be baptized in the Holy Spirit or baptized with fire. This is unquenchable fire. This means to be lost forever 
without faith in Jesus. Today, when we preach the good news, the main points are that God forgives those who trust in Jesus, He sends His Holy Spirit to live with them, and gives to them everlasting life. Stop the video and read chapter 3, verses 21 and 22. Why did God send a bird in visual form? For what purpose? And why these vocalized words? For whose benefit were they? In theology, we understand that God gave his Holy Spirit first to Jesus so that Jesus could give the Holy Spirit to all those who put their trust in Jesus. Stop the video and read chapter 3, verses 23 through 38. Note that the Greek in verse 23 reads, Being son, although he was being considered son of Joseph, Jesus was the son of Haley, the son of Mata, all the way through the son of Adam, the son of God. This gives rise to the dual genealogy hypothesis, whereby the Gospel of Matthew presents Joseph's lineage, the royal lineage, from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, through Jesse, David, and Solomon, and finally through Jacob, Joseph, to Jesus. The Gospel of Luke may present the lineage of Mary, that is, Jesus' biological lineage, beginning with God, through Adam, Seth, down through Jesse, David, and Nathan. And finally, through Eli, the father of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Stop the video and read ch chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. Discuss together. Does spirituality keep us free from temptation? Why did Jesus refuse to make bread for himself when he was hungry? Stop the video and read Luke 4, verses 5 through 8. Discuss together. Why did Jesus refuse the devil's offer of free authority and splendor? Understand that the Messiah would eventually receive all of this himself after having died for our redemption. And today, what motivates billionaires, bankers, and globalists to seek authority and splendor over the rest of us? Stop the video and read Luke 4 verses 9 through 11, then verses 12 and 13. Discuss together. Why should we not test God? Well, first we are to trust his promises and to fear his warnings. Remember, everyone is tempted by evil. So, discuss together. What are we to do when we feel strongly attracted by anything that we know is wrong or to which we have no right. Jesus being tempted by the devil is a clear contrast with Adam when he was tempted by the same devil. Now remember, God was Adam's creator, whereas God is Jesus' father. Adam failed when tempted. Jesus prevailed. We commit evil deeds as he did. Jesus died to remove our sins. We must all die. He died, but rose back to life. We must repent of our evil, whereas he has redeemed us by his death on the cross. We must have faith in Jesus, whilst he remains faithful to us. We now have hope. He promises to raise us to life. Meanwhile, we love one another, and his spirit dwells with us, and we will inherit God's kingdom whilst Jesus reigns as king forever. Finally, ask each other, what truths from this passage will you believe? Then what promises will you claim? And what commands will you obey? Your assignment for next time is to read carefully in different versions the Gospel of Luke, chapters 4 through chapter 5, verse 11. Visit the website luke.cura.download 
for other videos and documents, including these slides. As you read, compile your insights, queries, and observations to share with others.